This ESPN podcast is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. The BS Report. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Welcome to the BS Report. Monday morning here in Southern California. Big playoff weekend. One of the best ones we've had. Um, a guy who watched a lot of it, a sleep-deprived cousin, Sal, had his third kid since the last time we talked. An incredible story. We uh, we finished the podcast at 12.10 West Coast time, and Sal's wife is in labor. He tapes it from the hospital. So I assume they're, they're going to have the kid like late afternoon. Get an email about six hours later. The baby was born at 12.40 p.m. Sal, 30 minutes after you hung up, you had a baby. <laughs> I ran up from the courtyard. I, uh, I got in the room, the wife was scowling, and I think uh, I think that helped push things along uh, faster than they normally would have come. Real anger. So <laughs> yeah. you've really created a blueprint for if your wife is in a tough labor to pump the baby out. You just have to leave and do a podcast as she's like four centimeters dilated. Yeah, that's right. They say there's these weird salads you could eat or to, you know, or even have sex, which is outrageous. Mm. But uh, yeah, that, that I think that nothing moves it along faster than doing a podcast. My wife and I, for our first child, um, who's sung on this podcast now three times, mm-hmm. um, she she couldn't pump pump our daughter out, and we watched season one of Twenty Four on DVD in like two days. And really? Jack Bauer, the excitement of Jack Bauer, um, made the baby want to come out. Apparently. How do how do we not have a Jack Bauer Simmons? Well, was she was a female. Yeah, oh, we would have to call her Jacqueline. Yeah, Jacqueline. Yeah, that would have been weird. That could be. Um, let me let me just say, I don't want to get too mushy, you know, about fatherhood or anything, but really, there's there's no more beautiful sight than that of a, a bloody baby human head trying to escape the very vagina you promised God you'd stay loyal to for the next 40 years. I mean, it really, it's it's breathtaking. It really is. Yeah, it is. It is an eye opening experience if you haven't been through it. <laughs> yes, sir. There's a lot more colors than maybe you you wanted, you expected going. Yeah, they can't warn you enough about that stuff. Yeah, I would advise all all prospective dads out there to um to stay near from from kind of the neck up where your wife mm-hmm. is. Just stay on that side of the bed. Try to lock eyes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, just just don't don't go beyond the the curtain. Right. Basically, stay stay on the right side of the curtain. Right. <laughs> um, speaking of the right side of the curtain, so we had, I guess, for my column, um, two of the four games ended up being pushes. Yeah. In in real life. The Chiefs um, ended up being favored. There was a there was a three point line swing on Saturday, mm-hmm. and you were texting me saying, "All right, this is crazy. What is going on here?" Like I, I both of us were kind of flummoxed. And right, we had taken the Colts at minus one, yeah, and then it moved. Moved yeah, we had one of our great parlays ever. We had the Colts minus one, and we had the the, the Niners minus three. Yeah. The double push parlay, which seven I don't think I've ever of, had. Seven hours of rooting for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I hate that the last playoff game, and it was a great weekend, it, was, it, was, it ended on a push. I mean, we were, yeah. for gamblers, it sucks. You have to double up on the uh, GoDaddy Bowl. It really wasn't fun at all. Yeah, so. I wanted to uh, rent a sister so I could kiss her. <laughs> so... um the Chiefs game, though, really lived up to the hype for when you have a crazy, crazy, crazy gambling swing for points like that. Mm-hmm. And as it turned out, so what, what did the line start at? Two and a half? I think the Colts were two and a half, yeah. So everybody bet the Chiefs down from two and a half to one. All of those people won. Right. Then all the people who grabbed the Colts from – Pick them to Chiefs by one. All of those people won. Yeah, even one and a half went to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. The only people that really lost were the people that bet the Chiefs once it became a pick them. Right, yeah. Now, I feel like we oh. lost, too, even though we pushed. But to, to be on that, I mean, honestly, like, years from now, people are going to be like, wow, were you part of that? Did you bet the Colts-Chiefs game of that yeah. crazy comeback, greatest comeback of all time? Like, yeah, we pushed. We had the Colts, yeah. Yeah. We were all over that. Great push. <laughs> I think when it's minus one at that point, it should just be a pick em. Right, yeah. You should just you have to force the general public. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then the Niners game, which, to be honest, really felt like it was going to be a push all week. Mm-hmm. Um, did that ever go to three and a half, or it stayed at three? It never moved. I, I saw it stay at three. Some people claim they got it at two and a half, and it was one of those things. Where I, it was weird where you couldn't find anyone who liked the Packers at home in the frigid yeah. conditions at Lambeau. It was scary, so... 
But I guess it, it turned out exactly how it should have. The Niners win by three. And then the Chargers were, by game time, they were plus 215 in the money line, mm-hmm. which I emailed, I asked you about. Yeah. Um, we had discussed it a few times during the week. I, of course, uh, became a coward and did nothing. Uh, sure and uh, I actually thought it was going to be the right move. It was 2010. And and I'm sitting there as a Pats fan trying to figure out, do I want to play the Colts or do I want to play the Bengals? Mm-hmm. Now, what would your answer have been in that situation? I think I would want to play the Colts. You wouldn't have or you wouldn't? No, I would. I would rather play the Colts. See, that was my feeling, too, because I was thinking, all right, so Andy Dalton, they're going to score. It'll be 2017. Mm-hmm. They'll get a stop. Then he'll come down in the last three minutes. So some crazy pass interference play to A.J. Green. Yeah. Then they'll end up scoring on a Giovanni Bernard run. They'll win by four. Everyone will say, oh, Andy Dalton, he finally came through. And mm-hmm. then he gets to come to Foxborough and will kick his butt and win him by 30. Because I think Andy Dalton isn't a very good quarterback, as anyone who listens to this podcast has heard all year. Right. But I instead, mean, it just, it just shows you redheaded quarterbacks and coaches. They can't be trusted. Neither one can't, of them. Never. Oh. So Andy decided to just self-destruct in that game. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get the Andy self-destruction. What I do have with the Colts is a, a really, really horrible secondary. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Darius Butler being prominently involved now, which the Patriots waived, one of the many second-round defensive backs that right. they've waived over the years. Right. And uh, and LaRon Landry, who was concussed, who was, was awful anyway, and uh, Vontae Davis limping around. It really does seem like – Kind of the perfect team to play. If the Chiefs had completed that, well, well, I, I'm going to say it was either end of the third quarter, or early fourth quarter. They had that little swing pass to the third string running back mm-hmm. down the sideline. If yeah. he catches that, they score over 50 points against the Colts. Yeah, and and you it was also, right in his hands. I mean, you, this is the only Patriots Colts is the only game that is not a rematch of something that happened this year. But you did crush them last year. You put up how many points did you do that? that, that it was, was 59. It was 59. Yeah. So. T.Y. Hilton's like going to be a problem. T.Y. Yeah. Hilton's going to be a problem. They can't really run the ball, though. I do think Donald Brown's been better than than maybe people expect. Double Down Trent has uh has lived up uh, to to Done. the anti hype. Yeah. Had the big fumble in round mm-hmm. one. Looked like that was going to kill him. But um, you know, obviously the guy to be afraid of is Luck, who threw three picks, but kept coming, kept coming. I, the, the fumble recovery touchdown, have you ever seen a play like that? No. I mean, to see, be so laser-focused on what's going on in front of you and to get it. I mean, you, you would so many things could happen where you jump on it, and, and the most yeah. of them bad, and, and really everyone would have been okay with him just jumping on it. But to jump on it and lunge forward and have the wherewithal to get into the end zone, was uh, you, you, that, that's, that's the one thing I would worry about with the Colts. Like, those plays like that, you just remember, you know, like, oh, my right. God, if that hadn't happened. I, I don't see many other plays like that in, in these other games. So, that's Right. I thought he were. was he was super clutch. We, yeah. And what made what made it cool was that he had had, you know, some really bad plays early and he didn't get discouraged. Mm-hmm. You know, he just kind of kept playing along. I thought that fumble recovery play, I hate to cross sports, reminded me of vintage D- Jeter. Oh wow! You went like baseball. Those, yeah, I went baseball. You didn't one of those go weird ball. <laughs> no, it's like one of those weird Jeter yeah. plays where it's like, oh, how do you think of that? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think anybody else kind of either falls on it or catches it and looks around or doesn't know what to do. But it was almost like he knew the fumble was coming to him, and as soon as he got it, he was just going to run. Well, they asked him that. They asked. Uh, I have a clip of that. They asked Andrew the Giant Luck. They said, "Well, let me let me play it." Like, we're here with the great. Eighth wonder of the world, Andrew the Giant Luck. Andrew, you've recently been compared to legendary baseball star Derek Jeter. How, how do you feel about that? Well, Derek Jeter was a great player, and there's no question that's a, that's a huge compliment. But you know what? I'm I'm just trying to win win football games. So I'm just trying to to make a play and make something happen, and that's what happened right there. I love it. It's good. I'm getting better at the age of the giant. You're getting better. You texted me. You said, uh, we're, uh, they must have been down like 21 or something. You said, we're going to need Andrew the Giant Luck. I said, right now we have Johnny Rod. <laughs> right. <laughs> he was great. And Hilton was great. They, yeah. It's really not that good of a team. And now, where, where did you stand on Andy Reid's coaching performance? Because. Barnwell and, and Mays and I were arguing a little about it on email, and they were they were giving him credit for being able to score forty points without Jamal Charles. 
No, yeah. I, I give a little more of the credit for that to Alex Smith, who had put together two and a half of the most incredible quarters, I think, in the history of the playoffs by a quarterback. Like, he was just out of his mind. And the Colts just weren't off. ready, right? It just seemed no. like they weren't ready. They didn't show up in those first couple, three quarters, whatever. But, uh, you know, even actually, even they scored in the first, First possession of the second half, which makes you that guy. There's no no chance of a comeback, but but you always have that in your back pocket that Andy Reid is going to screw up the time management somehow, and it's all going to collapse on him, and it, it, he's going to have to get at least thirty percent of the fault. And I think that's what happened there. Yeah, I did thirty percent sounds right. I will say this: it was thirty-eight to ten. Mm-hmm. So at that point, only one comeback in the history of the playoffs. Only one team had ever come back by more points mm-hmm. than that. Frank, right? Yeah. Seemed totally unrealistic, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm watching the game. I'm with my friend Nathan, and and I'm like 38-10. This is totally doable. Luck can do this. And Andy Reid's on the other sideline, and I, I, I never gave up on that game. Yeah. And I think that's a tribute to Andy. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I just felt he. They kept showing him on the sidelines, just staring at this weird <laughs> list or chart, whatever he has. But uh, I will say this: if whether you want to blame Andy or whatever, if my team had blown a 28-point lead in the second half of a playoff game like yeah. that. Um, and then used all three of their timeouts for no really good reason at all. Two of them just oh. because the clock was running down. And then the third one they ran. Th- so there's two twenty left third down clocks running. They just run the last 20 seconds off the clock, go right. to the two minute warning, which mm-hmm. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. No, um, Not just call way. the timeout there. Because then mm-hmm. if you don't get the fourth down, it flips over. Then the two-minute warning stops it. And then you get to, like, you at least get the ball back with 30 seconds left. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't do that. Two-minute warning happens. They have five minutes to discuss. This is the, the biggest play of the season. Right. They come out. Andy sees something he doesn't like, uses the last time out. Yeah. It was incredible. I, you know, It was an incredible sequence. And we talk about it for – for years now, and everyone shouldn't coach like uh, like thirteen year olds played Sega Genesis, you know, nineteen ninety four, but <laughs> where you could score in eighteen seconds. But it is amazing how that's such a crucial part of the game, and none of these coaches and hate to switch gears on you, but Chip Kelly, I know it would have been unprecedented, but from the twenty yard line, if you let them score, if you let the Saints score, it's really your only chance to win that game. I mean, I can't, I, I don't care. Like we've seen it enough times where the guy kicks a 30 yard field goal. It's easy He's setting up for an extra point. And, and, and you just, you just lay in there and letting them crap all over you. And yeah, maybe the saints take a knee at the one, but from the 18 yard line, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Pierre Thomas runs it in or something. I, I think you have to take a chance there. You have to, you know, you got this job because you're a gunslinging coach. So right. play, play well, that way on defense. You know, we were texting about it. And my argument was the same guy would have fallen down. Yeah, maybe. But then we watched the Chargers game. Mm-hmm. It's twenty to ten. Ronnie Brown breaks through on like a third and short, mm-hmm. running down for a touchdown. All he has to do is fall down at any point, and the right. game's over. Yeah, now, runs it right in the end zone. So now, now the Bengals have a chance. I mean, they did nothing right. happen, but the I game's over a, if he a, falls down. It's a discussion probably with Peyton when they're at the five yard line or something. They're completely running the clock out. But when you're at the eighteen and you break a tackle, it's yeah, hard. Yeah, you're to, running in. Yeah, it's hard to hard to stop yourself. You're so, running in. So yeah. the uh, the Chiefs, if that had been my team, mm-hmm. I would have been in a coma. Yeah, because the closest I had to an experience like that was Pat's Colts, which is a very similar game mm-hmm. um, in 2006, the title game. Yeah, when we had our receivers were Rashe Caldwell and Jabbar Gaffney, right? And our defensive, our our defense just injuries and by it was like a mash unit. Yeah, and Manning got a little momentum and we just couldn't stop him. Mm-hmm. And then Brady didn't convert the third and three that would have won the game. I think he threw a little behind Troy Brown. Then Manning came down and finished the game off. And I was like catatonic after that. This Chiefs game was worse because they were also losing guys the whole game. And you could kind of feel like they had passed the point of they were they had just lost too many guys. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Maybe everyone should take uh, 2014 off from whoever they root for and root for the Dallas Cowboys. And then when something like this Chiefs, if you're a Chiefs fan and this happens to you, it's like you take it in stride. It's not that it's not that big a deal. But uh, like my big thing with the, all the gambling for these games is. I think you throw out the top three or four popular narratives, those being, uh, 
oh, look, Chief, Chiefs are back. Their defense is stellar. They got Tom Bali back in Houston. Um, Saints can't win on the road. And uh, what was the last one? Oh, and the Chargers don't deserve to be in the playoffs, so they're going to be an easy out. Like, if you just take the three most popular, you know, rants by the talking heads yeah. and bet against them, you'll probably win two or three. All of them. So yeah, you're gonna you're at least gonna be above 500. Yeah. Fortunately, we know a, a, a Chiefs fan, uh, the co-creator of 30 for 30, Connor Shell. Yeah. So here here's his text. He texts me at 142. Mm-hmm. Um, just broke out the Derek Thomas. Oh no, 134. Just broke out the Derek Thomas jersey for the first time in 10 years. Uh. I forgot how much I hate the Colts. All right, this is gonna be good. <laughs> um, the Lynn, eight minutes later, the Lynn L8 loss to Jim Harbaugh and the Colts after KC's 14 and 2 season is the worst KC football moment. Today we get revenge. All right. 151. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, 151. Let's win it with defense. That was after Jamal Charles goes out. Mm-hmm. 221. Donnie Avery! Exclamation point. 314. That's a nice half of football. Yeah. 326. Wow. Making reservations to go to Denver. Oh no! And then, then said something about Peyton Manning that involves an F word. Three thirty-one. This is terrifying. Three forty-five. I am sick to my stomach. Uh. Four twelve. Forty-six points wins this game. Four fourteen. We are losing on defense enough with the big plays. Um. Four twenty-two. Our secondary is toast. Four four twenty four. So Indy forty five. KC forty four. I am horrified. This is before the game ended. Right. Um. And then four fifty nine. This is crushing. Uh, yeah, it's bad. It's bad to be a sports fan. He could still keep his reservations for Denver and uh, celebrate the legalization of marijuana with everybody. I think he should still go into a coma. Just go with the Chiefs jersey. Everyone's buying still you go. drinks the whole yeah. weekend. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, after that half of football, you're just feeling fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. D, any any huge surprises for you in round one? Um, I like the way Kaepernick played. I guess so, but, you know, he almost threw a pick six in that last drive around the 40-yard line. And yeah. then the, the story would have been very different, how he had thrown yeah. two interceptions. Now all we hear about is, oh, his running ability has great strides and everything. And and that, that Niners-Panthers game, we'll talk about the line in a minute, but that's uh, – that's the toss up, right? I mean, you you just yeah. throw that. You you can't really pick that game, right? Is it just too hard? You know, um it, 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 I'm leaning toward the Niners in that one just cuz I think it would be really tough to beat them twice in the same year. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about that uh even yes even in that Chiefs Colts game on Saturday. It's tough to beat a team twice right. when when everybody's at a relatively same Whatever. I the thing that surprised me the most was how confident the Saints looked mm-hmm. outdoors in Philly. I mean, it wasn't as cold as I expected. If I had known it was going to be forty degrees, I don't know if I think I might have thought about that game a little more. Right. But uh, I thought they ran the ball much better than I ever expected because they didn't have Pierre Thomas. So that, without Pierre Thomas, I didn't think they were going to run the ball like that. Did you? No, no, it's true. No, and I think like guys like. But it was really Darren Sproles' play, the, the kick return that did it, right, and the, and the personal foul afterwards. I think like guys like Darren Sproles and Woodhead, I'm not saying anything that anyone hasn't said already, but they really could be difference makers. They get their solo yeah. to the ground. They get lost, and, you know, if there's weather, there's, you can't even see what's going on anyway in snow or, or rain, and they get low to the ground, and, you know, you're running between tackles. That That's a pain in the ass to stop uh, for 60 minutes. So those we, are the guys uh, to keep an eye on. The uh, the Woodhead thing, I think they got him for two years, $3.5 yeah. million. He's been mm-hmm. played in a lot of big games for the Pats. It's hard yeah. to believe that knowing what we know about football, that he somebody could just cherry pick him for nothing. Yeah. You know, at very, very least, that guy's an asset on third downs. And right. the, the Chargers are even using him more than that. I, I, I really liked how the Chargers played in that game. I thought on defense they were really well coached. Like they did, they, you know, they just kept changing gears and doing stuff. And it just seemed like a team that was on the same page. Mm-hmm. They ran the ball well. Rivers was really good. I mean, they were pressuring him in the first half, first three quarters, and he was making plays. Ran the ball well with it. Their center went out. Hardwick went out early. And like that, usually, you know, a lot of right. times the team will just crumble when that happens. And uh, they, they just took it in stride. And, yeah, they so beat Sal, the crap out of the Bengals. They really did. Th- this is a really important question. As we head to the round two lines, 
Who is the nobody believes in this team? Is it the Saints? Nobody believes they can win four outdoors. The only guys who believe this is the guys in this locker room. Mm -hmm. People said we couldn't win in cold weather. They, we can't win in the Superdome. Well, let's show them. Or do you go with the Chargers? People gave up on us. We were five and seven. Nobody said we should be here. Who, if you had to pick one, who is the nobody believes in us? Why, why do we have to pick one? I guess maybe we have two. Could yeah. we have a nobody believes in a Super Bowl? I think it is. I think it could be. Wow. Drew Brees against his old team. We have so we'd have a warm weather San Diego team. Yeah. And New Orleans playing outside the dome mm -hmm. in eight degree weather in New Jersey. In New Jersey, yeah. Let's do this. I like it. I like it. Why not? But I will say this one thing, and I warn yeah. you. And maybe I'm maybe I'm just preaching to myself here because I don't know if anyone else does this. If you take Seattle, if you mm. take New England, if you take Denver on a money line parlay or a teaser, you will lose. Don't do it. I'm going to do it, but don't anyone else do it. So last week, any tease wins unless you right. had the Bengals. Mm -hmm. unless you Which had the was Bengals, probably the right. most likely team that anyone would have teased. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you could have stayed away from the best team. But but you, these favorites, and you illustrated it nicely in your column, what, since 2000, so when was the last time two ones advanced? It only, it's only happened once in the last eight years. Yeah, yeah. And... The other thing that was in that column, go read it on Grantland if you haven't read it. Yeah. I put it up on Friday. The last eight years, every year, we've had at least one round two upset. Mm -hmm. And all of them have been seven points or more except for the 2006 Pats in San Diego. And they were only getting four and a half. And the only reason they were only getting four and a half was because of Belichick and Brady. That line should have been seven or eight. They, they got like the field goal of respect just because of Belichick and Brady. But from a talent standpoint – it was right up there with those other games. So, right. um, so one one lesson for round two is don't tease. So let just me don't. Uh, just don't tease. Just stop. No, absolutely. No three team teases. Now let me ask you this. Which now we'll do the lines in a second. We already picked them. We both know which which the other the other picked. So it doesn't matter. They're all around seven points. Seattle, uh, New or New Orleans, Indy, San Diego. Who scares you the most? New Orleans and Seattle, Indy and New England, or San Diego and Denver. I I would rank them. Um, San Diego and Denver would scare me the most if I had Denver. Mm -hmm. Then New Orleans and Seattle, yeah. and then Indy and New England. Yeah, that's what last. I was All right, boring. I had, I had the same three. That's well, the, they, the thing with the Saints, going back to the whole tough to beat a team twice thing, they mm -hmm. they got killed in Seattle. Yeah. What was it like five six weeks ago? 30, yeah, five weeks yesterday, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, but I, I that, know that's a different Seattle team, though. So, all right, let's get to it. That, that's the first. Yeah, let's game. get to it. New Orleans at Seattle. So New Orleans at Seattle, a Saturday afternoon rematch of four years ago, one of the great gambling moments ever. Yeah. Seattle. Different time, different teams. I think at that point, the Saints were like a nine-point favorite, and we put them with everything, with every bowl game, any uh, competitive eating contest. We, we had them. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think I had I had them teased with events that were happening three years from, from that game. Right. It was everything, anything we could get a line on. And then yeah. Marshawn Lynch, that was the day Marshawn Lynch turned into Marshawn Lynch. He did. Was the he day did. Beast Mode was born. He grew up in front of our eyes. And now you said six and a half. Seattle would give yep. six and a half. I said eight and a half. The actual line as of Tuesday, or Monday morning, whatever this is, is seven and a half. So uh, let's split so that split. one. So there seven you go. Seven and a half, say, that seems a little high. It is a little high. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe I have an anti-Seattle thing going lately, but it does seem like they've just, even at home, wait around for the other team to screw up, and then they start scoring. It's not the scoring machine. Percy Harvin might play, but not the scoring machine we, we remember from last year that was scoring 40 and 50 points towards the end of the year. Well, it does seem like the better the defense, the harder it is for them to score. Right. And you could say that for most teams, but it really does seem like they, uh, their big explosions came yeah. against the defenses that weren't as good, with the exception of New Orleans, which they dropped 35 on. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to make of the Percy Harvin thing. You think he might hurt him at this point? Well, so if he's returning kicks, that's a little scary yeah. for the Saints. Um, yeah. If they run... You know, if they have three plays that they go into the game and they say these three plays, we're going to run with Percy Harvin. That's a little scary too, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote, I I guess in the podcast maybe last week I said that um, the Seahawks didn't get big plays 
And some crazy Seahawks fan emailed me very nicely. He wasn't mean about it. Um, was just like, no, actually, we, we get a lot of big plays. Yeah. And apparently it's true. The Seahawks, for even though you don't think of them as an explosive team, get a lot of big plays. They're up there, yeah. Which I never would have guessed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I, li- I like what I saw from the Saints. And actually, I wish I had decided I'm, I'm writing that column on Thursday and Friday morning that nobody believes in us uh, road stuff really didn't get going until the weekend. And I think it pissed them off, and and it does seem like they're a little galvanized by nobody thinks we can win out of New Orleans. Everything that happened last year, um, I would be a little scared if I was Seattle. Yeah, I would too. I mean, this is the yeah, this is basically Drew Brees is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Not even basically, he is. But this yeah. team, this team is you know been there for the big games, and uh, they're not going to lay down because everyone says they can't win on the road. And like I said, I think Seattle is. About 80% of the Seattle Seahawks team we remember from last year. So I think this is a close one. The good, we're at, we are having Aaron shots on after you. The one thing with Seattle is, is how good they've been against passing offenses. Mm-hmm. I think they, I think they gave up less than 3,000 passing yards this year. Really? Which is really like almost impossible in this day and age. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, the Sean Payton, Pete Carroll thing, I think is, I would have to say an adva- a slight advantage for New Orleans. Yeah, I would and say then, so too. The, and we, we'll be watching this game at Shakey's, I think. <coughs> See, I can't even. Oh, God, is that true? Can't even, I think so. Oh, <clears> our no. annual fantasy banquet. Oh, my God. I my, might have to get bronchitis before the day before <laughs> that happens. Bronchitis before you get salmonella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bronchitis will fight the salmonella. <laughs> My kids actually got a basketball game, so I'm gonna have to struggle to get over there. But those so jerks voted me out. I don't care if John Ham chose yeah, on a mojo know. potato. What do I want? Want to go there so, for? Do you agree with the decision to put Seahawks Saints first? Um, that well, feels like a night game. So to it me. all goes around the night game, right? That, that's what they want to pick. But the but Patriots what do you think is a sexy... that night, They get it every year, don't they? What's a sexier game, Pats Colts or, or Saints Seahawks? If you're a football fan, you want to see St. Saint Seahawks. Yeah, if you're, if you're a football fan. I just if you're my they, mom, you'd rather watch Pat's Colts. They could push that Andrew Luck, Brady thing right. forever, though. They could just, you know, that, that's all they need to do to promote that. So. I have a great deal of respect for Tom Brady. <laughs> the eighth wonder of the world. Up. It's 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 an honor to be in a field with him. <laughs> so Pat's Colts, um, big monkey wrench for this one. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware. Uh Dan Deardorff's last game ever. Oh, it is. Oh, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. And and uh, of course they had to assign him to the Pats. Right. Because, you know, it, I mean, he was the announcer the the day Bernard Carmel Power took out Brady's knee. Yeah. Um, and and just kept. He, I kind of feel like he's the Zabruder of that moment. Yeah. I they, I think of it. And I think of Deardorff just repeatedly telling me to watch this replay and that replay and this is bad and oh my god mm-hmm. and I just I can't think of that moment without thinking of him. Well, there's footage I, of him high fiving Greg Gumble. It's very strange. <laughs> well, it feels like he's been he's been there for a lot of agonizing Pats games. Yeah. And it really bothers me that that CBS. I feel like CBS hates the Pats. This is one more, right? Wow. Like, why wouldn't Sims and Nance do the Saturday night game? Mm-hmm. Instead, they have Sims and Nance doing the Sunday afternoon game. Is that what they do? Yeah. They have Sims and Nance doing Chargers, Broncos in, in, in the afternoon versus this marquee Saturday night game with Brady. They CBS hates the Patriots. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, well, the fact that Deirdre's the doing this single-handedly <laughs> makes me nervous for this game. It's bizarre. I might not have I might not have sound on for the game. I might just go mute. You know they can't hear them even speak when they're on the field. <laughs> They can't hear the people in the front row. I can hear them speak. It's bad karma. Uh, what, what did I have for this you one? You had Pat? seven and a half for this. I had six. Mm. It's seven. Oh, I win that one. So there you go. Yeah, you got it. So you, we tied the first. Oh you God. won the second one. All right. Well, one one of the playoff manifesto rules that I still believe in. Yeah. Is beware of the the super duper obvious two team teaser in the same day. In the same um, day, right? Yeah, that will be the, the popular bet. And this Saturday. one certainly qualifies. People throw in the uh, Seahawks and Pats in yeah. the tees, which makes me super, even more super nervous. Uh, I'm, and I like it, too. God, I like it. <laughs> well, maybe the, maybe the Saints will blow it for blow that tease. 
Yeah. Maybe they'll they'll knock it out of the park early, and then everyone have to chase back with the Pats on right, Saturday night. Right, you take New England minus seven. Either way, you're calling the Indy New England game. Uh, I read that uh, Grantland's Bill Simmons is calling it the best war movie since Saving Private Ryan. It, I, it's the most extraordinary playoff game since Saving Private wow. Ryan. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be your thing. <laughs> you went I, from football to basketball, and even during the football games, this is how much you don't yeah. want to deal with it. You're you're you're, uh, you're rating you're <laughs> reviewing movies. It's the best. You know, here, here's what happened with that. People are screened the movie for Grantland in September and they mm-hmm. hadn't screened it for critics. And I really liked the movie. Yeah. So he's like, will you write a blurb for the trailer? So I was like, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I didn't know they were going to use it for the actual ad campaign. I'm That's not a movie great. critic. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad it helped, but um, <laughs> it was just, it was kind of funny. I'm like there at the New York times. It's like, who the hell am I? I'm some dude on a couch. Yeah. <laughs> what am it- I? I'm Siskel. It's a good time to come clean and say you never even saw Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> no, which one was that? Was that the one? <laughs> <laughs> I think Affleck. Is that the one with Jeremy Renner? That was the one with uh, uh, Tom Hanks. Is the dim-witted uh, guy from Alabama? Oh, no, I don't know. That's I don't know what that is. I will say this: I love Lone Survivor, and I did think it was the best war movie since Saving Private you Ryan. You did, but there's only been like two movies between them. There you go. Now you've said there's it twice. There's been Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah. Oh, I guess Black Hawk Down. There's right. been a few. I, this is my favorite war movie since Saving Private Ryan. I Good like Morning it. Vietnam. It's a lot. Yeah. Plus, it's a true story. <laughs> right. Thumbs up. And it brought back Tim Riggins' career. Oh, anyway. that's right. Yeah. Good. Good. Oh, um, that's worth it. Anyway. I have one point on the Pats, and then we have to move on. Go ahead. I'm really excited that Darius Butler is involved in this game. You are. You don't think there's a revenge factor? I, the revenge I don't. factor is all over the place in the, this weekend. I don't, I don't think there's any revenge factor with mm. Darius Butler. Yeah. And, and and it's amazing to me that a team can play in the second round of the playoffs with LaRon Landry, Darius Butler, Vontae Davis playing at like 60%. I mean, the mm-hmm. Chiefs really, if the guy catches the pass, they score 50-plus points in that game. Yeah. A without lot. a defensive touchdown or a special teams touchdown, which is like impossible. Mm-hmm. So Why don't you throw I, the Colts in that nobody believed in us uh, that you know, vortex. I, Cause I think people are, I think I know back home, everyone's terrified of luck. Yeah. People wanted to play Cincy. Yeah. God, God, My dad wanted winner. to play Andy Dalton. He does. Yeah. He wanted Andy Dalton in round two. He was excited for that. I don't think it's going to happen. I love the yeah. guy, but <laughs> yeah, he's, I, don't know, I don't know if Andy Dalton starts a game again. <laughs> you have to let him down easily. What do you do if you're the, if, if you're the Bengals, I mean, he's basically Brian Hoyer. Yeah, that's a tough call. I mean, but, he, but he's coming off of didn't he lead the team in uh, you know in team history most touchdown passes? Like, it's just, AJ just, Green and Giovanni Bernard and Gresham and yeah, uh, I don't know. It's not like he didn't have weapons. You have AJ Green on your team. You should at least they just weren't ready. They just weren't weren't looking. I mean, how many times did he throw along to AJ Green? Like twice. Did you say Mar- you see Marvin Lewis set the record for? Um, I saw this in Barnwell's com. Uh, 11 years now without a playoff win. It's the record. That's what it is. Jim Mora. It's him and Jim Mora. They're now tied at the top for most seasons with the same team with no playoff wins. Wow. So next year, it'd be a big year for him, making history. Well, Let's go to the, the next game. The hard knocks, Jenks, continues. Let's just put it that it, way. It really does. Yeah. All right, Sunday. Sunday, uh, 1, 1 p.m., San Fran at Carolina. All right, here's what happened here. You said Carolina by two and a half. Yeah. I said Carolina by three. The game started to pick them. It opened to pick them. Mm. People bet it to San Fran minus three on the road, and now it's wow. at San Fran minus two. So you get that. Being four and a half points off, you get that win. What did you What did you say, I Carolina said by three? three? Yeah, we both said Carolina. You said Carolina, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter, but yeah, you, you get it anyway. Yeah, the Carolina now, and nobody believes in us, candidate. I uh, know. They haven't even played a game. Plus, they won in San Francisco. Yeah, 10 9. That seems to work against them. <sighs> I would love I to know not that... have a dime. I know it's not possible. I'd love to not have a dime on this game and just watch. Or would, bet, be cool. I'd love to bet on uh, San Fran by three. We should just bet the push. You can yeah. bet the push, right? You can bet to win exactly by three. Because sure. that's what we should have done with San Francisco Green Bay. We yeah. should just bet the push. It was so clearly going to be a push. Mm-hmm. 
I might pick the push in my column. Do I get points if I do I get the win if I pick the push? I think you can. Anything else loses, and I win if it's a push. Well, now it's down to two, so that's a, oh. that's an even harder push. You know, twenty three, twenty one. Not a popular score, but <sighs> I like that. You know, the difference with San Francisco now versus a month ago or two months ago or whatever. Well, two differences: Crabtree, mm-hmm. and then. Alden Smith looks like Alden Smith again. I know he was banged up in that game, but he was still making plays, and it just feel, they feel like the Niners when you're watching them. Alden Smith was phenomenal, like furious. Yeah. And I mean, I would go as far as to say he was Alden Smith is the best war movie since Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> I really would. He's, he's something else. But he was, was like, the most off. extraordinary <laughs> pass rusher since Derek Thomas. <laughs> Saving Derek Thomas, but he's pissed <laughs> off after every play. He's probably held yeah. on like five plays that they didn't call. You know. Yeah. He is, uh, he's mad. He is a maniac. That's a good team. This, he, every game you watch with him could be his last. You don't, never know. He's a, a, always a threat to be on TMZ Sports at yeah, 4 in the morning. Exactly. Is San Fran going to – they could possibly – I'm getting ahead of myself here, but they could be a favorite on the road all the way to the Super Bowl, right? That would be amazing. If Seattle loses. They're kind of the everybody believes in this team. Oh, they have to go to New Orleans. Oh, New Orleans would go to them, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't 100% trust Kaepernick. Yeah. This could be the game where, where he does something. That's what I'm saying. He threw some weird. He threw. Uh, he got bailed out a little bit yesterday. He's really something because he's he's. If you're betting against him, you're terrified. Mm-hmm. If you bet on him, you're terrified. Everybody's terrified with Kaepernick. And I have to say, like, uh, uh, conversely, when you look at Aaron Rodgers' pedestrian number, it was 170 yards and touchdown. I thought he made every big play. Didn't it seem like every? Yeah, he had a much bigger great. game than that. Well. I had to fight myself from tweeting about uh, the helmet catch parallels with the guy at the freaking crazy hold that yeah, uh, yeah, Rogers yeah. to break free. It was exactly like the helmet oh, catch. Yeah, exactly. but I, I fought it off. I, did, I didn't tweet. I was proud yeah. of myself. All right, let's go to the last game. San Diego, the last Denver. one is San Diego, Denver, 4.40 p.m. Sunday, Eastern time. Yep. You said 9.5. I said 9.5. It's 9.5. So you won Beautiful. the week. We're tied uh, 9.91 going into week 20. And I'm really enjoying the Broncos fans pretending they're not terrified of this game. Yeah. Well, they split like in the regular Vegas. season. I have a history with Phil Rivers. And I nothing's worse than going against the old offensive coordinator. Yeah, that's true. Who know who knows basically all your moves and gimmicks and everything. Yeah. Right? It would be like if some writer left Kimmel's show and then had to plan it like went went to Fallon, right? As Fallon's going eleven thirty five. And then and then knew Knew all the stuff your show was going to do. Yeah, like that would that would that you guys would be bummed out about that. No one would be dumb enough to do that. That's silly. That's silly well, talk. Jimmy would have them killed. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> They're saying Phil Rivers is that's the best bolo tie since Saving Private Ryan's <laughs> bolo tie. That's what I'm saying. We uh we were we went on a little road trip this weekend. We were driving back. I downloaded some podcasts, including our friend Corolla, who yeah. did a podcast with Kimmel. Uh-huh. He's like, I, I, you know, nobody's done an interview with Kimmel, like an old school, just like a, no comedy, just like a real, and then proceeds to talk for the next 25 minutes. I think Jimmy said three sentences. <laughs> and and still no one has done a real interview with Kimmel. <laughs> that was the point of that. I really want to do a real interview with you. Then Carl talks for 25 minutes. And then proceeds to tell Jimmy's story instead of having Jimmy tell it. It was uh, great. I was dying. I was weaving weaving between lanes, laughing my ass Look, off. Anyway, that's why he placed in the Character of the Year award uh, <laughs> rundown. So our gambling go. advice is no. Oh yeah, the uh, congratulations to our 2013 Character of the Year, Daniel Kellison. Daniel Kellison, our good He's friend. Great. Um, so our advice this weekend for gambling purposes so far, unless thing changes, is do not do a Saturday tease. History says you will get hurt. Emotionally. Do okay. not do a three team tease with the three big favorites. Mm-hmm. And we're a little afraid of the Saints and the Chargers. I agree. But let me ask you this gun to your head, because people like to know this stuff. And I know it's Monday and you'll write something different yeah. Friday, but as of now, gun to your head. So let's say Private Ryan has a gun to your head. <laughs> Pick two teams to win, two teams to advance. Pats. <laughs> That's where yeah, I am. I'm yeah. in the same place. Did you even say anything else? That's uh, it, right? The other three, the three underdogs are scary. I'm in the same place. Yeah. I, I want so bad, badly to get sixty cents on the dollar with a 
New England Denver money line parlay, but who do you, who do you have tonight in the in the whatever? The- I'll tell you what. Let me just say, uh, Grantland, look for my my blog Friday afternoon. A little bonus: Florida State over thirty nine and a half points. It's going to be a lot of scoring. Mm. A lot of scoring. Okay. 12, Twelve out of thirteen games they've scored forty or more, and this is uh, this Auburn defense, eighty eighth in the country. FSU over thirty nine and a half. You have a Jimmy plug for us? Jimmy Kimmel Live, Courtney Cox tonight, The Bachelor, Juan Pablo, and Jonathan Rice. And then uh, later in the week, Amy Adams, Sophia Vergara, and Kristen Wiig. Uh, nice eye candy going on. I am very excited for Juan Pablo's Bachelor season. <laughs> and I think he's a real threat to break Bob Guinea's record for most uh, sexual interactions. He's getting he's getting Anchorman 2 promotion from ABC. <laughs> <laughs> they need it. They, they, need, they it. need the hit. It's true. They really do. All right, cuz, congrats on the three kids. Good job by you. Good job by you, Billy. All right, we're going to bring on Aaron Schatz from FootballOutsiders.com. Before we do that, I wanted to mention our sponsor, Stamps.com. I know the holidays are over. You're probably not mailing as much stuff, but that doesn't mean you can't sign up for Stamps.com. Go to their website. Put in BS in the top right where it says you can put that little special uh, promo deal, and you get a bunch of stuff. You get, I think, 55 bucks off off, uh, postage. You get a free scale. You get a whole bunch of stuff. Try it out. Try out Stamps.com. You don't have to go to the post office anymore. You can do everything from the comfort of your own home, stamps.com. And now, the editor-in-chief of footballoutsiders.com, and we wanted him last week, but my it was my fault. My schedule didn't work out. Aaron Schatz, how are you? I'm good, man. What a weekend. What a weekend. Wait, your favorite round one ever, maybe? Pretty close to it, yeah. I mean, um that Colts Chiefs game, I can't, you know, after I was in the press box for the Denver New England game and I was the person telling everybody not to write this game off because weird stuff happens in the NFL all the time, mm. I can't believe that I actually wrote the Colts off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because weird stuff happens in the NFL. The NFL we, it's time to redo all of our win expectancy charts because the rise of offense has just made comebacks more likely than they have have been in the past, and you can't write teams off, and I feel like an idiot for having done so. And what a game by the Colts. Just amazing second half. And what a poor first Yeah. I never wrote it off just because Andy Reid was involved, so that always has my attention. But um... Yeah, although there wasn't too much Andy Reidness in this game, the things that he's known for doing badly. I mean, well, they lost the time, this game the three primarily because great. of the injuries. They just lost so many players. Once Brandon yeah. Flowers was out, nobody could cover Hill. Yeah, that was a trouble. And and also the third string running back dropping the probable game clinching touchdown that that wasn't helping him either. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it was quite a weekend. So we have um, three relatively big favorites in round two, and then we have a Carolina San Francisco toss up game that has already had move two and a half points from gambling purposes. San Francisco now favored in Carolina. Um, you were crunching the numbers all year. Denver and Seattle were your two best teams by DVOA this season. Right, and they were the two best teams last season. It's the first time in the history of our ratings that the top two teams have repeated two straight years. Well, and so Seattle, I, Seattle was the first team to be number one two straight years since 1997. Wow. So I... I uh, I crunched all the different weird numbers from the last eight years because we've just been on this eight-year run of uh, crazy playoff stuff for my column on Friday. One of the things that surprised me, the Pats were the last team that finished number one in DVOA and actually won the Super Bowl, the 2004 Patriots. Yeah, it's really remarkable. I started doing this in 2002. So mm-hmm. the DVOA is based on stats from the last few years, and yet it does a much better job of predicting the Super Bowl champion in the 90s than it does in this past decade. But that's true of any stat, whether it's an advanced stat or just looking at wins and losses. Now, I wrote about this last year. I'm not sure there's actually some kind of weird trend going on. I think it's possible that what we saw in the 80s and 90s, particularly before the salary cap, Mm. was sort of randomly more teams that were the best team didn't get upset than you would normally expect. And in the last few years, what we've seen randomly is more upsets than you would usually expect. So we've gone from fewer upsets than random to more upsets that are sort of random. But I'm not sure things have really changed. I don't know if this is really a reason to write off top seeds. I think maybe the problem was we got too used to the idea of top seeds winning, when in reality, in a sport where only one game moves you on, 
we should have expected more upsets in the 90s than what we got. I I agree with part of that. I do think that because of the cap, it was much hard. It was much easier to stack teams, or the yeah. lack of a cap, I should say. And, but what's and I do interesting think- is in the regular season, <laughs> parity has actually decreased. The better teams now are more dominating in the regular season than they were in the 80s and 90s, and the worst teams are worse. It's crazy, but if you go back and look at those Dallas teams that people thought of as so dominating, they're not as dominating on a game-to-game basis for the most part as, like last year's and this year's Broncos and Seahawks. One of my theories that I wanted to explore in that column and I thought I was going to write was that it was part of it was the home field advantage just not being as good because these new state-of-the-art stadiums and just the crowds not being as uh, affecting of the games. But actually, I think the last two years, the home teams were like 16 and 4. In the, yeah, in the but playoffs. this so week we saw the out. road wins. I, you know, you might be right about that because if you think about it, what's the one stadium where home field really, really, and I'm Does not it? just saying this anecdotally, statistically, really seems to matter. It's Seattle, where they really did build that thing to try to be loud. Exactly. But, like, think about, you know, in the old days, you, you go in a mile high or, or Pittsburgh or all these different places, and it just seemed like it was tougher to win. And now I think part of it is the way they build the stadiums. I think it's fan behavior. Maybe people have their Blackberries out. Their re- Who knows? I don't know. But it doesn't seem like – these teams are as intimidating now. You know, the other thing, the QB headsets. When did we start with the QB coach headsets? I don't remember what year that was. That might have played a factor, too. Maybe part so. of the reason also is if they're letting more things go in the playoffs penalty-wise, the fact that the home team subconsciously tends to get more, you know, there tend to be more penalties called on the away team subconsciously mm. uh, by reps. Maybe that that's, maybe that's, you know, if there's fewer penalties being called overall, I mean, God, my God, that San Francisco Green Bay game was ridiculous with the amount of stuff the that was called on both teams, on both teams. Did you get home at catch flashbacks? Did I what? Did you get home at catch flashbacks on the Rogers play? <laughs> Not as much because I don't think he was ever in the grasp. I will, I will go to my grave. I know people will say this is Patriots fan, you know, Patriots fan bias, but I will go to my grave feeling that in a regular season game, Eli Manning would have been called down in the grasp on that play. Well, that was like the third, the number three thing that bothered me about that play, that the two guys getting held as, as he was in the grasp. I don't, I can't even, let's not even go down this road. I'm, I'm, when is the bitterness going to go away? You know what? Never, never, but it's, it's a lot never. less bitter. It's a lot less bitter than it used to be. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Think about uh, how bitter it would have been if, if we had been Browns fans instead of Patriots fans and that had happened or Lions fans. or Well, something, that, yeah, that's you know. the thing. I was thinking the Chiefs fans probably don't want to hear about us being bitter because we didn't win four Super Bowls instead of three. Right. Um, I mean, you know, the fact is three rings make things feel pretty good. Probably the same thing goes for Giants fans who might be upset about this season or Steelers fans who missed the playoffs this year can feel good about right. all the rings they have. One thing about one more thing about the underdogs these last eight years, I do think the change in the past the passing rules and just how easy it is to throw the ball, I think, just makes it easier well, to Well, that's part of what's made the offensive yeah. levels go up and that's comebacks. And also, there has never been a time in history where offensive philosophy has been more ahead of defensive philosophy as far as creativity, both in college and in the pros. Mm, interesting. Uh, so just crunch the numbers. I know you're not really – it's about Wednesday when you really have a total feel for this, but just looking at these matchups, anything stand out to the four matchups? Well, the Patriots should be dramatically favored over the Colts. Because the fact is, I appreciate what the Colts did with this huge comeback. But the Colts, you know, their offense had not been that good since Reggie Wayne went out. Um, You know, the end of the season where they had three wins that really weren't that impressive. The Chiefs win was, but the other two were not really that impressive. They were over bad teams. Uh, The Colts haven't really played that well this year in the second half of the season. Aqib Tlaib should hopefully be able to, well, hopefully for me and you, not hopefully for Colts fans, be able to somewhat shut Hilton down. So I actually think that that is the biggest mismatch of the weekend, not because the Patriots are so good, but because I don't think the Colts are as good as they look, despite the greatness of their quarterback, and he truly is great. I also think that um, San Diego could really upset Denver, even though Denver's the better team. San Diego's defense has improved so much since week 13 when they took Derek Cox out of the lineup and they put Richard Marshall in as the starting cornerback instead. Then they got Melvin Ingram back and gradually moved him into the lineup. They're a much better team now than they were a month and a half ago. That being said, Welker missed that game, and that's a big deal for Denver 
it really resets their their passing game to get Andre Caldwell out of there and Welker in. It was also a Thursday night game. This yeah, was a you, little bit wonky. Yeah, the results of Thursday night games, it's really weird when you look at the numbers. Not only do the results of Thursday night games not look different than you would expect, but they don't actually really have more turnovers and penalties than you would expect. It just feels that way. Maybe, so So I'm 100% wrong. I know it's well, weird. I was thinking with that one is, so the Broncos win on Sunday. Four days later, they're playing against San Diego. It looks like San Diego's season over is over. And you kind of you you just kind of let your guard down a little bit, right? Like it's hard to get really fired up for that game. You just played. Get this yeah, I mean, I'm talking about team. Thursday night games in general. Yeah, they yeah, no, seem like that... they're slower. They seem like they're more sloppy, but mm. so they're really not. You, oddly enough, you have to go in two minutes because you have to be a dad. But so you think San Diego legit chance to upset Denver? Uh, well, first of all, as we know, given the last few years, every team has a legit chance. Indianapolis has a legit chance, especially because their their quarterback is so good. Um, but I really do think San Diego legit chance to upset to upset uh, to upset Denver actually definitely. What about what about St. Seahawks quickly? Um, you know I, I really like the Seahawks. I think that this is another one that's pretty one sided. I appreciate what the Saints did this week, but Seattle is the best team in the league. It has been all year. Plus the fact is they really do have a bigger home field advantage than anyone else yeah. um, consistently over the last few years since that stadium was built. Um, and, and, you know, they are my favorite to win the Super Bowl, and they've been my favorite to win the Super Bowl since the preseason. So, you know, I really like I really like them in that game. Uh, Seattle is the third best defense in the league against opposing tight ends. They're the number one pass defense by our numbers. And third best defense against opposing tight ends is exactly what you want with Jimmy Graham. I don't mm-hmm. know if they're going to try to do this with a linebacker or if they're going to try to you know, to put do Earl Thomas instead of putting Earl Thomas in deep center field the way he usually is. But, I mean, I think this is a team that should be able to cover Jimmy Graham better than anyone else. And I, the, the more I look at that game, and I haven't decided what to do yet, but I do like that they lost in Week 16. And I still think, like, that was the worst thing that happened to the 07 Pats was not losing that Ravens game in, like, Week 13. You need you need to get punched in the jaw once and and realize you're not invincible. And I think well, that was I'll a good you, thing Well, I'll tell you, I mean, I don't believe in – I guess I don't really believe in that psychological stuff as much because I do think that once you get to the playoffs, everyone wants to win the freaking ring. But well, that's true. From a, from a point of view of maybe making Seattle go and reevaluate their offense to that's figure out about. how Arizona shut it down to make sure that doesn't happen again – that was a good thing. I think it's always a good thing when you're going to be the number one seed anyway to have something that kind of makes you question yourself a little bit instead of just thinking, ah, oh, we're going to roll through this. This is going to be great. I will what about say, Carolina? I do hope, I do hope okay. Carolina San Francisco is exciting and not just a, a total slug fest. I hope it's an exciting defensive game and not just a boom, boom, boom defensive game, but uh, it should be really close. It's a real toss up. So do you, when you, do you make anything from four quarters that those teams have played? Like, would, can you crunch numbers from that and think, oh, well, this can happen, I don't this think can you happen, can take can anything happen. from that from a numbers perspective, but you can from a scouting perspective because you look yeah. at how they covered each other and you ask each other, you ask yourself how they're going to change that next time. But the fact is that, that life is filled with times that teams have rematches from a regular season game that go completely differently. Remember the Jets and the Patriots in 2010 was a great example of that. Yep. Um, the fact that... Uh, San Diego lost to Cincinnati and then beat them this week. So, you know, it's you can't really take that the first game was close, the second game. I mean, it should be close because these teams were close all year. That would be an interesting project from one of your minions to measure the DVOA of repeat matchups or teams that have played. There's really no predictive. It's, it, the, whole no year, the whole year is more predictive than one game. All right. Aaron Schatz. How would you do right. last week, by the way? Uh, we were uh, – Two and two against the spread. If you uh, look at the original Kansas City line, one and three against the spread, based on how the line ended. Yeah. It's a weird week. Three, yeah, weird it was three. It's been a strange year, dude, for both of us as far as weeks go. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm ready for 2014. Aaron Schatz, <laughs> we'll talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Thanks, man. Bye. Target the sun off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. Geico presents Strange Savings Stories. 
Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.